At Trinity, our worship series for Lent has been uh, around the title, God on the Move, as you can see uh, in the front of your bulletin. Um, we were going through um, reflecting on the nature of God and Jesus, who has never stayed in one place. He was always moving from one place to another, towards the place in need of healing, towards the individuals in need of forgiveness. And this nature who is always on the move is never static in our understanding also. And we've been reminding ourselves and challenging ourselves if it was us who were building the wall around the concept of God who is always on the move. And today we come to the conclusion of that Lenten journey of God on the move. And a few nights ago, um, as I was half asleep, half, half awake in the middle of night, I had this great insight of how to end this worship series boldly. And, and I was thinking, this is great, this is great. When I wake up tomorrow morning, all I need to do is to sit down and write it down. And then when I woke up, I couldn't remember. <laughs> I couldn't remember what the sermon was. It, was. it was so good that I could remember giving myself a little laughter here and there, uh, some moments of inspiration, but I just couldn't remember what my thought was, and I still don't remember what it was. So, what I was trying to say is, unfortunately, you won't get to hear the best sermon today. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. There are those moments when you are completely thrown off because all the things don't, that doesn't go the way you planned or expected them to go. You know, like when you turn on your computer screen in the morning and you see a tragic news an image about a historic building burning, being on fire. And just this morning, as Lois shared, there, was, there were explosions in churches and hotels, and they were having Easter service um, in Sri Lanka. Eight explosions this morning. What this means is that for some people, some people out in the world, another day of commute another day of busy life of survival, another day of being present in worship with the loved ones isn't the same as ever before. The emotion of sorrow follows only after accepting what we're seeing on our screens, on our phones, as a new reality. And I was thinking, maybe that was what, uh, what the woman, what those women in front of the empty tomb was going through. Early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb where Jesus' body was supposed to be located. When they arrived, the stone was rolled away from the tomb. The body was gone. And this was very very unexpected. Out of all of their thoughts leading up to this point, let's think about it, processing the scene of Jesus hanging on the cross. They were looking at that and making the bold decision to at least do their best to bring the spices for proper respect to the dead. Even when there's that risk of someone accusing them of being one of them. Right? Out of all of that, Jesus' body not being in the tomb was not one of the possibilities they had in mind. The, this Easter story uh, told by the Gospel of Luke was all about being thrown off by unexpected realities. Easter stories are, are all in four Gospels, as you all know. But the details are a little bit different from one another. In the Gospel of Mark, 
there is a young man dressed in a white robe. In the Gospel of Matthew, there is an angel who comes down from heaven with a violent earthquake. In the Gospel of Luke, there are two men instead of one man or one angel. Two men in bright clothes. And they all proclaim the same message, that Jesus has risen and not, he is not here anymore. But all of them are said in a statement form. What is unique of, about the Gospel of Luke is that this was asked in a question form. And the question goes like this. Why? Why do you look for the living among the dead? Why? This why question is the question for all of us who are reflecting on this Easter Sunday. And it is not a why in a criticizing way, uh, criticizing the size of your faith. It, it's not that kind of why. But it was a why. Why do you look for the living among the dead? What is it about you? What is it about you to do that? Why are you so frustrated right now? What is it about you and your anger? Why are you so anxious? What is it about you to feel that? Perhaps Easter is not about the conclusion after all. Perhaps Easter is not just about the happy ending that we all long for. But perhaps Easter is more about taking some time to think about what just happened. Jesus did his part. He showed what love looks like, what victory looks like. Now, now, what are you going to do about it? I found it very powerful how today's reading ends in the Gospel of Luke. When the woman told all these things to the disciples after, after the initial scene, they went to the disciples and told all about it. And Peter, among all the disciples, got up and ran to the tomb. And these are the exact words from the reading. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he, and he went away. And pay attention to this last part. He went away wondering to himself what had happened. And the way I understand that uh, this is that Peter is not just trying to make a logical sense of what happened. He's not being a CSI trying to figure out where the body is. But I think this is a much deeper spiritual reflection of attending to the status of his own soul. So in the midst of all this victorious, springy, hopeful messages of Easter, let us not forget to take a moment to attend to our souls today. Like the words from the hymn in the garden we just sang, let us join Peter coming to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. As we stand together in front of the empty tomb, I pray that we can hear that voice today. I wanted to share something uh, that happened two days ago on Good Friday. For the, for the past few years on Good Fridays at our church, uh, we have done Stations of the Cross uh, here in the sanctuary. So we'll have several stations, 14 uh, stations, and um, it, it is a self-guided uh, prayer practice around the sanctuary. And this is for reflecting on the, uh, and this is how it, uh, it, it happens. You, you reflect on the Bible passages and leading up to the crucifixion. And each station has a different hands-on prayer practice uh, related to the passage. 
And it is definitely one of the most, most powerful time uh, for me because, because after it is all set up, um, I can be in deep worship myself as I do the walkthrough. So I love it. And uh, I recommend this walk to families with children and youth because it provides an opportunity for the younger ones to process what this crucifixion story and resurrection story is all about. Anyhow, again, this year, Hyoin, uh, my wife, went around the stations with Noah while I watched Zoe from downstairs. So this is what Hyoin shared with me afterwards, after they finished the walk. Uh, well, actually, after uh, that evening when we went back home. There was a station where the prayer practice was to think about a, a concern or a regret, burden, or, or a sin. And, and then to sum it up in one word. And then you were to write that word in the sand, provided in a dish. And you sit with that word for a moment, and then wipe the word uh, on the sand, remembering the healing and forgiving grace of Jesus. So when Hyun asked Noah if he had any concerns, um, Noah shared that his concern was, um, was if, if his friend would suddenly, suddenly be mean to him and not play with him. That was his concern. Suddenly, his friend becomes mean to him and not play with him anymore. He shared that this feeling of possible rejection was what he was worried the most about. And I had to spend some time to process Noah's response that night. Not in a sense of trying to figure out what's what's going on in our beloved child's life at school, but rather in a sense of being attentive to my own heart and to see why I was feeling what I was feeling. It wasn't the helplessness of parenthood, of not knowing what to do next, or wondering if there's anything I should have done better. It wasn't entirely the feeling of compassion, of understanding how awful rejection feels like. It wasn't that. Because somewhere inside me, I knew there was some kind of relief. Relief. Some kind of a release. I came to realize that what I was actually feeling that night, uh, reflecting on Noah's reflect, uh, response, was God's assurance. God's assurance that God is the one who is walking with Noah right now. As Noah learns and practices how to connect within himself. And he's only five, right? He's learning that. Practices ability to reflect, not just reflect, but articulate his fears and worries. Not being afraid of being exposed. And I was just so thankful for that. I told myself, yeah, yeah, he is on the right track. He is on the right track. Thanks be to God. I want to say one more thing as we conclude this worship journey with God who is always on the move. There are those of us who may be feeling stuck in life right now. There are those of us who may feel like living through darkness. There are those of us who will feel like life is not going anywhere near as we planned. But remember this. When God is on the move, when God is on the move, it is beyond our plans. It is beyond our expectations. It's all about unexpected. It is beyond the norm. If you were paying attention to today's reading carefully, you might have noticed how the Easter story 
begins in chapter 24. It sets its time as on the first day of the week. On the first day of the week. And the reason this first day is so important is because it brings us back, all the way back to the first day of creation. The day when God creates order out of chaos. The day when God creates light out of darkness. Easter is not a happy ending. It's not just a happy ending. It is not the last day of vacation, right? Neither it is about having the greatest worship and sermon because everybody will be here. It's not about that. And you might forget by the morning, right, what, it, what, what the plan was. But Easter is the first day, first day of the many, many wonderful days where God creates and molds. And may God bless each one of us who will wander and ponder on the Easter story, that this Easter day will be the first day of many days with the light and hope of our risen Christ. Amen.